which was later used a lot by Michael Joaquin. So, but he was the first one who took this concept for, for America and applied in American environment. So those are the influences. Nonviolence, as I said before. Um, James Farmer was was on, was one of the big four of the big of the civil rights movement. That means the the most important uh, representatives of the civil rights in the six in the nineteen sixties. Together with him was Martin Luther King, Roy e. Wilkins, and Whitney Young. They used to have meetings every month uh, to discuss the the movement, and they they always. Decided the new, the new, the new ways that the movement was would, would, would take the new marks. What they they were going to do. So James Farmer always talked to Martin Luther King to help him in the in his speeches and in the ideas that the movement was going to take. And as I said before, James Farmer found the Farmer found the core, and he worked a long time in the NAACP too. This is the symbol of the NAACP. That this ex still exists today. Actually, it was its, cent its, its centenary was like the last month. Um, so now I'm going to talk to talk about the freedom rights. The freedom rights was the fa first famous movement of the civil rights movement. Um, it began. It was in 1963, and the what what happened is that the black people they should always in that at that time they should always sit in the back seats of the bus. Buses. And they, they organized themselves to refuse to sit in the back seat. They said they will all, they will all sit in the front seats of the bus, buses and they will not move. And they, they did these rights all across the South, which, is more, uh, which had more prejudice and hate. They, this is a, this a picture shows the timeline of the, of the freedom rights. They got beaten many times, but they, they did this, their, their schedule as they planned. They didn't stop. Uh, instead of any of beatings and many pressure from all over the states they passed. And uh, this was the first famous movement and the media after this gave much more importance for the civil rights movement. And after and because of this it was more much more easier to organize others other movements and other marches. And everybody was looking more at the civil rights movement. So this was the first one. So that why that's why James Farmer he, he was the main organizer it was very important. Now the march in Washington. The march in Washington uh, was when Martin Luther King delivered his famous speech, I have a dream. But what many people do, don't know is that James Farmer was of the, one of the main organizers of this, of this march. However, he was not present. He was arrested a, a few days before because people knew he was not one of the main organizers of this march. And he would, uh, he would have delivered his speech uh, to, before or, or after Martin Luther King, but at the same, the same place and time. And, that, and because he was not there, King had the whole audience just for him. And his speech got more important and more, uh, was, more, was more famous, because nobody did the speech to, in, but him. So he was, a, a, was a very important to organize this march, and his absence there was even more important for Martin Luther King. Okay? So this was uh, my, my James Farmer, and now Eric will summarize what we did. Okay, let me review again. There are three people, Michael King, Howard Turner, and James Farmer influenced Martin Luther King Jr. Michael King influenced his son because of he fight the segregation for a long time, so his son's influence from him. And then Howard Turner wrote a book which influenced many leaders, including Martin Luther King, of civil rights movement in his spirit. And next person is most important, James Farmer, the man who applied Grandi's non-violence concept in the US and organized the freedom rights, as the Joa said that. Okay, then my partner talked about the survey of the Dr. King's dream. Um, this graph shows the American people's satisfaction with civil rights movement. This graph was taken from Gallup.com. And as you can see, in 1979, uh, 1970, 1997, 70% of American people only, only 
considered only some or almost none of Martin Luther King's Jr.'s dream and the civil rights movement had accomplished. But however, in 2008, 43% of people, American people, uh, considered the goal of Martin Luther King had a all or more, most goal of Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream had achieved, had been achieved. We think that there's a big influence from uh, President Barack Obama, and he because he won the election and became the president, that made people change their mind and start made them think that the civil rights movement had to accomplish something big. However, his dream, Martin Luther King's dream, had never uh, had not completely accomplished yet. And uh, we believe there are a long way to go. Let me show a video and show you how Martin Luther King imagined his dream. Bear with me, guys. Did everybody hear this? <laughs> yeah. Well, there was also writing. What? Would you like to hear it again? <coughs> yeah. I think that's a good idea. Do you want to replay it? Yeah, if you, if you can hide it well. Yeah, you can, you can do this in the bottom too. The size of them. Oh, it's okay. This is a, a small excerpt of the dream, and we think this uh, resumes very good what he meant in this day. And this still, this is still a, a big issue, not not only in America but in the whole world. And we hope you also can take your own conclusions about this issue, and uh, I don't know, maybe contribute to achieve his dream. Okay. Thank you for your listening today. I hope you learned something. Thank you. So, um, now we're going, we're going to open. We're going. We will be happy to to hear some questions from you, and we will answer as best as we can. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, do you think if if that that day the Martin Luther King uh, speech here, the dream he had to do. If the friend James Farmer speak that today, how different between uh, his speech and the Martin Luther King's speech? And uh, Martin Luther King may, may be famous today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, oh, I didn't James Farmer, so maybe he can answer this. Yeah. Um, if is always a good question. <laughs> we will never know, but... Um, James Farmer was a great orator too. If you ever uh, heard about a movie called The Great Debaters, uh, which was a college, which was a co uh, college from the south of uh, from the south of the United States, was a black college. They won very many debates until they, they debated Harvard. And James Farmer was 14 at that time, and he debated on one people who, had, who was in co were in college at that time. So he was a great debater too. Um, Martin Luther King, even though it was uh, as history history tells better than him, and but probably if he was if he was there, not, nobody knows what he, what he would say that time. Probably he he, he would have a big impact too. And nowadays they would probably both they would both be sure famous and important. 